So hello and welcome back. I am searching for spring today. Why? Because it was sunny. And while searching for spring, I thought it would be fun to take you with me. And of course, we're going to start off with my swan friends. And I thought I'd just like throw facts at you while I was doing this because, you know, why not? So, first we're going to do some trumpeter swan facts. Did you know that trumpeter swans are the largest native wa waterfowl and the heaviest flying birds in North America? They can be up to 30 pounds and their wingspans can be up to 10 feet. They mate around the age of two to four years and they will remain with them pretty much for life. The only exception is sometimes if a partner dies, they will choose a new mate. They do get really aggressive and territorial um, during their breeding season, which these guys are, are doing a little bit of courtship and welcoming to a pair that we're about to fly in. They're very, very noisy birds. They're very cool and very cute. And they do tend to be fairly friendly to people as long as you don't mess with them. So that was some fun little facts about swans. And I did manage to get image of the swans as they flew directly overhead. And we're going to be very, very quiet here in a minute so we can hear their wings. That flapping noise is actually the sound that their feathers make. Unlike owls, they are very, very loud flying birds, which I think is really cool. After I fed the swans, it was time to head out for a walk in the, the woods, or at least uh, along the road. It was not too bad. Um, especially when I was on the crunchy snow, which you can kind of hear. Although I did go ahead and turn it down because the first time I went to do this video, the crunching noises were almost unbearably loud. It was kind of funny. But yeah, it was an absolutely beautiful day and it just makes me... It makes me happy to see spring coming back even if I didn't find too many signs of spring other than the daffodils that were coming up close to the house. I mean, there were some muddy spots on the road, which is kind of exciting. But other than a huge abundance of sunshine and it almost felt warm, granted warm after all winter, just means sunny with no wind and about mm, about 40 degrees Fahrenheit was I think our temperature when I went out but it was enough for me to decide that I wasn't going to wear my winter coat I was going to wear my spring coat because darn it I'm trying to channel spring so I had to zoom in on the cattails because I just think they look so cool when they fuzz out. All right, so I'm gonna slam some Michigan, or at least Upper Peninsula of Michigan facts that I found on the upsupply.co list of Upper Peninsula facts that I could share with you. Some of them I knew, and some of them I didn't. So, did you know that the maximum north-south distance of the Upper Peninsula, not the entire state of Michigan, but just the Upper Peninsula, is almost 125 miles? So, from the tip of Copper Harbor down to the southernmost point of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan is 125 miles almost. And from east to west, it's 320 miles, which explains why it always takes me so long 
to drive from where I live now up to Houghton. <laughs> So, there are also 1,700 miles of Great Lakes shoreline, which is a lot of shore and is also one of the reasons that a lot of people call the Great Lakes the third coast. And I personally, if you're going to ask me, think we're the best coast, even if our water is really, really cold. It's fresh water, and it's guaranteed shark-free, at least until bull sharks start swimming up the Mississippi. We're going to hope that doesn't happen. Did you know that bull sharks are actually able to survive in fresh water? I don't like the thought of sharks in the Great Lakes. The, the tiger muskies are enough. Which, if you've never seen a tiger muskie, look it up. They're terrifying. Uh, speaking of terrifying things about the Great Lakes, they are very, very deadly lakes, and there are over 30 sunken ships just in Bay de Noc, which is over by Wisconsin. Also, we have the Sioux Locks, and the construction for the Sioux Locks began in 1837, and it has been operating since it opened in 1880 or 1855. I almost made it 30 years younger than it is. Also, as I am sitting here looking at all of this snow, we get a lot of snow up here we get a whole heck of a lot of snow up here and the record for snowfall in the upper peninsula peninsula i can speak of michigan is 356 inches and that was in the winter of 1978 and 1979 and that fell up in the keweenaw and I think it was actually in the little town of Delaware. Not the state of Delaware, but the town of Delaware. The least amount of snow that the Keweenaw ever got was 81 inches, which was back in 1930. So we get a lot of snow. If you actually look at the fact that... Um, I think 320 or whatever inches, that is 32 feet of snow in one season, which is a little bit insane. And there is still a marker up in the Keweenaw, and it looks like a giant thermometer, and it measures the depth of that snow from that year in the, back in the 70s. So I thought that was kind of cool. There are also almost 400 species of birds that are found in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. The Upper Peninsula has 15 counties, but only one area code. Everywhere in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan is covered by one single area code, which is 906. So. If you ever want to call someone in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, you only have to memorize one area code, which is kind of cool. Um, the largest county in the Upper Peninsula is Marquette County, and it really, even though it's the largest city and the largest county, the city of Marquette only has about 20,000 people, and the entire county only has about 67,000 people. So you can tell that um, we're not very populated up here and that's fine with most of us. Also, Lake Superior, which is the largest of the Great Lakes, is the same size as the state of South Carolina, which is um, interesting. <laughs> you, you definitely have to at least put that at interesting. The Upper Peninsula is only 3% of the population of Michigan, which is not a whole heck of a lot of people. But you know what? I still like it here. Because, of course I do. It's beautiful. 
I mean, look at that snow. Now, I was having a grand old time walking along, and then I came to this spot, which is where the snow ended and the ice began. <laughs> And um, that was where my walk started being a lot less fun and a lot more, oh God, please don't let me fall and die. Thankfully, um, I did not fall, but there were a few hair raising moments. I think one of which I, I had the camera on for, but it was just a little tiny slip. I also really wanted to get over to the lakeside, but that just never happened because what I'm focusing on right there is supposed to be road, and it's just not. And I decided to be a big baby and not go through the thigh-deep snow just to get a good shot of the lake. So forgive me for that. It was, it was just really nice to get out and get a walk in. And hopefully you at least uh, learned a few new things about the state, or not the state, but the Upper Peninsula anyway, of Michigan. Oh, let's see. We can also do a few more facts. Um, I'm hoping that this year maybe I can take you out to Tequamanon Falls which is the third most voluminous waterfall east of the Mississippi River. So it's, it's a really cool, they call it Little Niagara up here, because it is a little bit like a tiny little Niagara Falls. And there, there I just slipped. Not bad, but I did slip. Uh... The, the ice was a little much today. But only for the, like the last third of the walk, so it wasn't too bad. And, you know, I ended up doing the truffle shuffle over a lot of the ice, which, um, it was fun. It, it supposedly works different muscles, I'm sure. Although, uh, we'll see if I'm feeling it tomorrow. Hopefully not. But yeah, I was hoping that maybe I would find just one flower poking through the snow, but I think I'm still a little bit too early for that. Although, like you saw at the very beginning of the video, I do have daffodils. They're, they're trying really hard to come out, at least next to the house. That's always the first place that gets thawed out because it gets a little bit of the heat loss from the house. And that thaws out the ground just enough for those to be the flowers that bloom first. And yeah, now we are looking at the ice. It was so funny because I was walking along and I was like, how am I going to not die? Because, you know, slipping and falling and breaking a leg would put me into a rotten mood for sure. So I just did the truffle shuffle on all the very, very shiny parts of the road. <laughs> and the absurdity of it. I think that ice cube is going faster than me. Amused me a lot. <laughs> but you know, Getting that little hit of vitamin D is great. I am legitimately terrified to lift my feet right now. <laughs> God, 
gotta love the truffle shuffle walk. I think I was still making pretty good time, though. Just a little bit icy. I'm not sure it would be safe to drive a car on this. This is very smooth. I think I got the hang of it now, though. That was water. Back to safety. Now, as to the is it safe to drive a car thing, my neighbor drove to Marquette today, and when they got back, they said our road, especially, was exciting to drive on. You can just take exciting however you want to take it. Now here at the very end, there are two definite signs of spring. So I'm just going to let them play out because I got really excited about it. So I am now officially declaring, even if we get more snow, which is still a distinct possibility, but even if we get more snow, I am declaring it to be spring. Oh yeah, and, and the swans are definitely um, inviting themselves up the hill quite often. I, I don't know if you saw the short that I put out yesterday, but there is one especially who I think he wants to be a, a lap swan because he will come right up and sit not a foot away from me and act like he, he's just going to come and sit with me. That way he gets all the corn for himself. They're cute though. <laughs> They're like, what are you looking at? Well, you silly swans, we're all looking at you. I'll be happy when the lake thaws out and they can actually swim around again. They're pretty on land, but they're majestic in the water. And there it is my genuine sign of spring. Guys, I think it's spring. He was a little upset. I don't think he was really ready to wake up. And that is a sandhill crane. He was up really high. Oh, I lost it. 
But anyway, as always, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you learned some fun Upper Peninsula facts. And uh, yeah, I will check in again with you later. Thank you for watching.